What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. If you enjoy what I do, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and also make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be made aware as new content becomes available. In today's video, I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about working with pattern parts and the pattern editor. Now, in a recent update to Studio One, we got a couple really great improvements with the pattern part that made it much more usable for me. So I thought we'd take a look at those in addition to a few other miscellaneous improvements. Okay, so first things first, let's have a quick listen to the track that we'll be working with. Just a little something that I put together for sake of demonstration. We have an impact kit that I've created. We've got 14 sounds spread across the pads and then just a basic synth pads being looped in the background. Okay, so let's say that you've done your sequencing, your programming, and you just kind of want to simplify the view. If you click this icon, we can hide unused and this will filter out any unused lanes and just give you the, rel the relevant information for what you're working with. And then at any given point of time, they're not deleted, they're just hidden and filtered out. We can choose to show default. Okay, so the first thing that I want to take a look at is delay. Actually, let's duplicate this variation so we're working off of a copy. I'm going to solo out the clap and maybe the snare, and let's add a four on the floor for the clap and the snare together. So if we play this, you can see that these are happening at the exact same note. So this is a 16th note pattern. So we have 16 steps with a resolution of 16th notes, meaning that one complete pass is going to be one bar. So each one of these is a 16th note. Now in the previous version of pattern parts or the pattern editor, we were basically locked in. And if you wanted to make any adjustments, you'd have to convert this to an actual instrument part to offset the MIDI. But with this option over here, delay, you can actually delay the individual lanes if you want to. Now I find this to be really, really useful for things that are happening on the same beat, like a clap and a snare, it becomes very easy to create a flam. So for example, if I move this up, take a look at the first pattern part of, of each downbeat. You can see them moving in real time. Let me just right click and reset this. Now I'm gonna show you another tip. If you hold down shift while you're adjusting, it will move everything together and it'll snap no matter what the values are. If you hold down shift and I select any one of these, it will automatically snap them all to that same value. So what I like to use this for is I will create just a subtle flam. Maybe we'll solo this out. Let's exaggerate that. Now this is done by percentage. I would have preferred that it's in milliseconds because I understand that a little bit better. But regardless, that's a really quick way to be able to create flams for certain elements. And the great thing is you can sequence with everything being hard quantized, but then you can kind of humanize it by using the, the delay value. Now, while we're on this note of using the shift modifier to adjust these, if these are different values, and I wanted to make a relative adjustment versus absolute. If you hold alt or option, that will allow you to move things up or down and they will maintain the relative um, timing between each other, regardless of what parameter you're set to. Okay, so that is working with the delay. Now, another thing I wanna take a look at, let's just get rid of these. I'm just gonna drag across. I want to take a look at this over here. Notice that this one block has a different length duration. So because we're working in 16 steps with a 16th note resolution, and this particular lane is the same, let's go ahead and draw this out. Each one of these is a 16th note. Let's say that I wanted these last two to be eighth notes versus 16th note. I could simply drag these in, and if I hold down Shift, I can extend this out, and now this is what I have for this part. Now this becomes really, really useful when you start talking about bringing the repeats into the equation. So for example, let's delete this. Let me drag this out all the way here. If I have the repeats loaded and I add one repeat, you'll see that we have the initial quarter note plus a repeat. If I add two, I'll have my three repeats. Now let's change the length of this to, for example, an eighth note. Notice that we still have the two repeats in addition to the note, but it is going off of an eighth note length now 
versus a quarter note. Now I could also make this a 16th note. I really wish that we could go down to half the size here, but basically the way that you have to work this is you create your grid or your resolution in the smallest value that you think you would need. And then you have the ability to lengthen the duration of some of these individual blocks, which when used with the repeat function, you can basically do nice little turnarounds at the end of your percussion parts and things like that. So this is what I've done with the hi-hats here. If we take a look at this lane, you see that I just dragged this out. All I did is extended the length and turned it into an eighth note versus this. and I could extend these repeats as needed. One thing to note about the repeats too, this is a mistake that I was making when I first started using this, is that it's not necessarily that the amount of repeats will be the amount of notes that are triggered or samples that are triggered. Basically what happens is with the repeats set to zero, and let's just go with a 16th note like this, with the repeats set to zero, you just have one 16th note. If I add one repeat, it's giving me an additional repeat, but it's happening within the 16th note duration. Now let's extend this out so it's a little bit easier to work with. So this is an eighth note duration on my grid, and I've got one repeat added, meaning that it's giving me two in total. If I add two repeats, the repeats are happening over the duration over here. So it's an eighth note with two repeats, meaning that we have three notes. And this is just basic math it's going to divide the number of repeats based on the grid length, and that's what you're going to hear rhythmically. So that's how that ends up working out over here. So this is one of my favorite features in addition to the delay. It's something that I use a lot, and it makes things very usable. Um, and then, of course, we have all the other functions that we've always had. We have the ability to accent notes by hitting the Command key. We can adjust the... Uh, let's go to the velocity for a second. We can adjust the percentage of the accent. This is very similar to anybody who's worked with step sequencers in that type of environment. You can set accented notes. Now that's a global preference, but like I said, uh, we can do the same thing to get rid of them, holding down command or control on a PC. We can also adjust these on an individual basis. And then like we know from our previous shortcut, holding alt or option is relative. So we can adjust all these relative to each other. Holding down shift will basically, you know, center these off wherever your cursor is, and then you can drag them all up and down together. So just some really, really useful features that can really help uh, when you're working with the pattern editor. I think I'll leave that as is right now. And maybe in another video, we'll take a look at a couple different ways in which we can create pattern part presets that can be saved and recalled or shared with others. So anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.